Okay, so let's keep moving forward and uh, let's focus on actually cleaning up the branches a little bit more. So what I want to do is I want to actually add a little bit of droop to the branches and, and as they start to increase in their y direction, all right, what I want them to do is I want them to start pointing upwards. Now, if their y direction is pointing down, I want them to droop down, all right? Um, so let's take a look at how we are going to do that. Okay, so uh, the first thing I want to do is I kind of want to rearrange how I'm doing uh, this particular technique right here because I need access to each individual copy and I want to work with each individual copy to do that drooping effect. Okay, so to do this, I'm going to drop down a for each point loop right here. Okay, and I'm going to wire in the result of this branch normal directions right here. Okay, those are all the points that we have right there. And you'll notice now what we can do is I can come into this for each end and turn on the single pass. And now I can work with each individual point and I can get data from it, specifically this y pause data. Now, uh, if you're familiar with the copy to points node, you can also copy the point attributes. So let's take a look really quick at these two different techniques here. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to wire in the result of this for each begin and then wire out the result of copy to points into the for each end right there, okay? And uh, you'll notice now we can work with each individual branch and start to do operations on that. So we're gonna perform that drooping amount right here, okay? So let's keep moving forward. Oh, I wanna take the result of the for each end and actually wire that into the merge there. All right, so that way we have access to that. Okay, so. Um, let's take a look at at least accessing the point. So like I was saying before, inside of the copy to points node, if you have this copy to points or copy points attributes right here turned on, you'll notice that in the final copy that it is actually copying over that y pause value to each point on here. So you'll notice that if I were to change the amount of points and come back to this node, we now just have three values because there's three points here. Okay. Um, so uh, there's a couple ways you can do this, and the reason why I'm talking about it is because I want to show you the two ways. That's one way, right, is you can just utilize the value coming in. Um, the other way to do it, and the way that I'm going to use here, I'm going to drop down an attribute wrangle node, okay? So we're going to do some more vexing here, all right? And I'm going to pipe in the result. This is the individual point that we're currently working with, okay? All right, and it's always point zero right, because we're working through each of the points, so it's always going to have an ID of zero, which is awesome. We can always count on that. All right, so I'm going to wire that into the second input here, and remember that the inputs are zero based, so it's zero, one, two, three, okay? So inside of this particular node here, um, what I'm going to do, actually, first, let's go in here. Sorry about that. I'm going to drop an attribute delete just to prove that this is in fact working. So I'm going to say attribute delete and we're going to delete that Y pause. All right. So now we're not getting it copied over. All right. So we have a clean value and we can also change this gradient value as well. So let's get rid of that for now. There we go. So now we have nice clean attributes to work with. All right. So in our inside of our attribute wrangle node here, so let me wire this up like so. Uh, what I want to do is I want to capture the current points gradient and its y pause. So this is just the other technique. Okay. So what I'm going to do is drop down a comment and we'll say uh, get y pause and gradient from current point. All right. So in order to do this, we're going to utilize an expression or a method called um, point. All right. So um, I'm going to first do f at, because we're going to store this in a value, okay? So we're going to store it as y pause. So that's the name of the variable. Is equal to point. That's the function that we're going to use. And now the point takes three uh, arguments here. So let's go into the help here. Really quick, let me launch the help. It always uh, helps to bring this up during the videos, just so uh, we can all see. So there we go. We'll go to the point vex function here. Okay. And you can see that it takes the geometry we want to work with, the name of the attribute and the point number that we want to work with. Okay. So um, in this case, we want the geometry from input one, all right, the second input. So we need to put in one for that. 
And then the attribute that we are looking for is the y pause. And then the point that we want to get it from is point zero because that's the only point that we have. All right, so point zero is that only point over there. Remember, if we go up here to that for each begin, that's the only point that we have, so we want point zero. Okay, great. So let's do the same for our gradient. So f at gradient is equal to uh, point, and we're going to get it from one, and the name is gradient, and we want it from point zero. And we should probably name this something else because I'm going to use that same, so we'll call this other gradient, or we'll call it the main gradient. We'll use this value for controlling the global drooping amount. All right, so now you can see we basically get the same result. All right, we're getting those values. So we have the main gradient and y pause. All right, and we can actually change this y pause just to make this even more evident. We'll call this the droop direction, like so. And there we go. So we have droop direction and main gradient. Cool. And that value has been put on each individual point there. Okay. So with that, uh, what I want to do is I want to put in the gradient for the branch. All right. So the main gradient is the gradient for where the branches are being placed on the trunk. All right. So that's going to be useful information because then we can change the value as they're placed. Uh, the gradient that we're going to create in here is the gradient for this particular branch, and that'll control how it droops over the length of the, the branch, because at the, the root of the branch, we don't really want it to droop that much. It needs to kind of fall off. Okay? So we need a gradient in here. So I am going to say uh, float gradient. This time I'm not going to store it into an attribute. All right, I'm just going to put it into a variable. And that gradient, again, is at pt num divided by at numpt minus one. All right, we'll put that inside of parentheses like so. And then we'll do the cast like that. There we go. Okay, so now we have a gradient on this particular branch line right there. Okay, so what we wanna do first, let's go and just droop everything by its droop direction amount. So we'll do this kind of one step at a time. So at p, dot y right because we just want to droop it up and down okay so at p dot y plus equals all right so if it's negative it will be a negative droop if it's positive it'll be a positive droop okay uh, equals our droop direction so we say at droop direction like that cool and you can see that it's it moved the whole thing so if we come back up here and template it it moved the whole thing down. That's obviously not what we want. So what we want to do is we want to then multiply that by the gradient that we created. So the branch gradient right here. So we're going to say ch ramp because we want control over it, right? We don't just want a linear droop. And we'll call this the uh, droop amount. And we will pump in the gradient here. All right, and then we'll make that particular curve. Okay, so now we should be seeing the droop amount in here. Oh, and the reason why that's not working is because I didn't make it a attribute. I just made it a local variable. So there we go. Perfect. All right, so again, we can move this different sides here and we can droop this however we want now. All right, so the best thing to do here is to just make all these guys. So I'm holding down shift to select all the points there and just set them all to a B-spline. That'll make it nice, nice and curved. Now you notice that uh, when it droops, um, the lines get a little bit longer or the segments in between each points gets a little longer. Now uh, there is a fix for that, but it's going to be a little bit too complex at this phase in the, the series. So uh, I'm just going to leave it at that for now. All right. We actually want to be able to rotate each segment and keep the segment length um, I'll do another tutorial on that here pretty soon, but I want to still keep this relatively uh, basic. Okay, this will suffice for now. Okay, so with that, let's take a look at the final result here. So let's just turn off that single pass in the for each end node. And let's take a look at what we get. All right, so now we're starting to get something that's way more natural. All right, so if we take a look at the final result, we now have 
a pretty natural drooping amount. But what I want to do, let me actually pull up where the branches start here a little bit. Cool. So what I want to do is I actually want control um, over the global droop. Okay. So in order to do that, um, I am going to come back into my uh, attribute wrangle, which we should name. So we're going to call this the branch droop like so. All right, and we're going to create another uh, variable. So I'm going to put these or this line into a parentheses just to kind of section it off there. And we're going to multiply this by a the global or the main gradient here. So I'm going to create another ramp, and this is going to be a ch ramp, and we'll call this the uh, global um, droop. And this will just allow us to control the droop over the whole length of the the trunk here. Okay, so I'm going to pump in that main gradient like so all right and now you can see that they all aren't drooping anymore all right and let me hit the create uh, spare parameters and now you can see that because we have this linear curve here at the bottom we're, we're not really getting any droop and at the top they're starting to fan back up all right that's pretty cool actually in and of itself and what we can do now is we can put in a, a point in the middle here all right and then increase the bottom to get just a little bit of droop at the bottom there. All right. And we can just, again, overpower all this stuff. So now we have lots of control over how this looks. Very cool. And we can bring down, you know, the, the main droop at the top there. So now you have lots and lots of control. Cool. That's kind of what I'm looking for. All right. All right, so what we want to do now, or at least what I want to do now, is I also want to put in the p-scale. And I know we removed it uh, beforehand, but let's put in the p-scale here. So we'll say at p-scale is equal to our at gradient. All right, so this is the global trunk gradient there. And there you go. So now we have that control. And again, let's put that into a ramp so we can control it. All right, so we'll use that a lot. I'm going to call this the uh, branch size or global branch size. How about that? Make sure we put a comma in there and just close it out. All right, create that spare parameter. And there we go. So now we can have control over how big the ones at the top are. Maybe they get bigger in the middle and they're the biggest at the end there like so. And again, if you want to go and smooth all that out, you can just select all those points by holding down shift and set it to B-spline. And then if you want to control the branch size even long more, we can just do something like that. That's more of a global control as well. All right, so that is the drooping there. So that's all I really wanted to do there. So I think in the next video, we will start to put in the smaller kind of fronds, the branches that branch off the branch. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's keep going. Thanks so much.